Hello, everyone. My name is Matt Kretzinger, and I'm Director of Special Services for the Marshalltown School District. And this week, I'm excited to have two guests with us from the Four Oaks Agency. You guys will introduce yourselves, please. Hi, I'm Mike Kureshi. I'm a program manager uh, across mid-Iowa uh, for Four Oaks. Hello, and I'm Brian Christofferson, Education Lia Liaison, also with Four Oaks. So we just wanted to talk with you a little bit and give you some information while we have this time of COVID going on. One of the things that families continue to wonder is, um, you know, the parks are closed. We're not supposed to be grouping with other people. So what are the kinds of things that I can do to try to keep myself calm, keep my kids calm, and, and just not get so restless? Do you guys have any suggestions or things to share around that? Yeah, I can talk on that a little bit. Um, in professional terms, we talk about self-regulation. Um, what that means to me and my family is trying to not go crazy, right? We've got a lot of people in the house, kids, a dog. Uh, there's just a lot going on. And the more sane we keep ourselves as adults in the house, um, the less anxious the kids get. And if we are getting crazy about toilet paper, for example, um, they're gonna start getting bonkers and it's just gonna be a whole cyclone of, of stuff. Um, so that, that's what it means to me, Brian. Absolutely, Mike, I, I hear what you're saying. Uh, same thing here in my, at my home and Ultimately, I mean, this is unprecedented. We haven't had to deal with this. And all of a sudden, um, you know, we are, we're, our lives are usually go, go, go and kind of crazy outside of the home and doing what we do. Um, and now we always desire to have more family time. And now here we have it. And, you know, it can, it can be kind of too much at times. And, uh, you know, so it's, it, it is, it is kind of great. I know for me personally, I enjoy, um, we actually, got to sit down and eat some meals together, which doesn't always happen. And so, um, you know, you get, you try to make the best of it. I, I would just add like what you said, Brian, um, in terms of rituals and things like that, it's trying to stay structured as best we can. Um, I can own that lunch isn't always fluid in terms of, you know, what time it occurs, but dinner is really important to me. Um, you know, have we had some frozen pizzas? Sure. But to try to cook some meals, to get people around a table together, um, to interact um, with actual humans, that's, that's really important to me and my family. One of the things that families continue to talk to us about, and you see on social media and we hear through the news, um, they're feeling really challenged to stay connected while also following the guidelines of social distancing. Do you guys have any advice or suggestions on how to work through that? Yeah, that, that's a tough balance um, to tell my kids they can't have friends over um, because it's, it's not appropriate right now, um, but to allow them to be online, but as in moderation as possible because that's how kids are interacting right now. You know, they got these headsets on, they're talking to each other through the computer, um, but how much is too much and how much is not enough? Um, so that, that's one of the things we're doing in my house. Um, you know, the other thing is we can interact with each other outside of just having dinner. You know, I might watch a movie that I wouldn't normally watch, uh, might watch a TV show, uh, like the Goldbergs or Young Sheldon, you know, that the kids actually get into, you know, we can laugh, um, trying to talk about the NFL draft, you know, like we can interact that way as well. Brian? Yeah, that, that's a great question. You know, when, we, when we're trying to be distanced and uh, wait, physically away from each other, uh, but it's still really important to socially and emotionally connect, especially with, with our family members. And one thing I know, my son's a little bit older um, and he's, he's been, you know, taking breaks during the day when he's been able to get outside now that it's, you know, mid April, and it's getting a little bit warmer out. And so he'll be kicking the soccer ball around or 
grab a wiffle ball with the bat and hit around the yard. And um, even just a couple of days ago, he was uh, he got a golf club out and found in the garage somewhere some wiffle ball golf balls and was hitting them around. And so I went out there and we we made up a little course in the yard. And so we were able to kind of play together and engage in a game, even though we could stay you know safe enough apart. So um, you know just doing things together. Um, really important and it, it is a challenge you know it's it's kind of hard to play board games when you're you know touching all the same pieces or whatever but um you just got to kind of be creative and uh you know just find find ways to the best you can to engage i know in my house with a middle schooler and an elementary age kiddo we've done things like um reintroduce puzzles you know i'm, I'm not a huge puzzle fan but it's something we can do together and we can stay connected through doing it We've talked about going outside and flying a kite because it seems that we're having these great spring winds. Um, so as long as the kite doesn't you know, blow us a couple miles away, we're good to go. And just try to do some of those little kind of connection things, cook together, spend time together. It's really nice, but then there are times that I'd really like to interact with adults. And I know my kids want to interact with other kids. Schools are doing a few things through um, video chats and some of these other social um, social networks, I guess I would call them, to allow kids to have some connection time. But you guys think it's all right that kids do a Zoom or a FaceTime? Yeah, I can say that Four Oaks in Marshalltown, um, staff are phoning kids. They're Zooming kids. Um, they did this very uh, cool uh, academic Easter basket where there's books and Uno cards and we dropped them off at their doors um, and you know, then left and they knew that was there and they kept, kept it as sanitary as possible. And now the kid has something to keep themselves busy. Do you have any suggestions, maybe a strategy or two that you know, a, a parent could use or a guardian um, on any given day to try to keep things calm and regulated? Yeah, I, I can talk that. Uh, like I've said, um, trying to have as much structure in place and personally with me and my family um, not awesome at it but that's what I strive for um, to know what time we're eating to you know hey let's watch this show tonight at seven and it's you know 12 o'clock you know to try to have a routine like to say, you know what? Yeah, you don't have to go to school, but you still have to take a shower. You know, th th those are things that we're trying to keep um, things as normal as possible. Um, I've heard a lot on the news, and I try to limit it, but the new normal. And, and I don't like that. Uh, there is no normal right now. It's the new now. And so we have to think about what is happening right now and kind of go, you know, day by day, sometimes hour by hour. Uh, well said, Mike. It, uh, I have I've kind of two thoughts on that. Um, and one idea is to, to try to be proactive, right? To, to, there's going to be stress, and, and we want to try to understand that the best we can. So if I, if I could, I'm just going to speak about a visual uh, that I think kind of helps simplify this uh, that I came across in an article I read recently. And so uh, the article was called Four Things We Can Do Every Day for Our Mental Health. And so it's four categories here that you see on the screen. Um, and that is some sort of physical activity. And that doesn't mean you have to, you know, lift weights or go for a long run. It's just little short doses or spurts to, to move your body, right? Get up off uh, the couch or wherever we're at. Um, and it, another thing I, I've noticed for me is now that I'm home all the time, and all of a sudden I'm hungry and I'm going to snack and everything. And so just being conscious um, to try to mix in and, and nourish and, and, you know, eat whatever healthy foods we can, uh, some fruit or some nuts for a snack instead of grabbing that bag of chips every time is, is helpful. Um, the, the other main thing that we've talked about already is that social support and connection. Um, as humans, we all need structure and we all need connection. And so really finding ways to connect. And a lot of times right now that's virtually, um, you know, through electronics, uh, but at our own home, really connecting with our loved ones. And finally, um, just in terms of reducing stress, give yourself that moment, especially 
uh, as the adults, like Mike alluded to at the beginning, um, we really need to set, set that example and keep that calm, even if we're not so calm on the inside, because kids will uh, reflect how we're feeling. And so being as proactive as we can, if you just think of these four categories, to move, nourish, connect, and be, try to do a little bit of it each day, kind of like a, almost like a prescription that you're giving yourself to uh, invest in and, and feeling healthy and, and uh, you know, really minimizing that stress. And then on the flip side, um, there's those moments, right? And I've had them with my wife already. I've had them with each of my kids at different times where we've just kind of got to our uh, boiling point times and maybe got a little short with each other that we might not normally do. And so um, as the adults, being able to pump the brakes a little bit, push the pause button, whatever it may be, just stop for a moment and, and, and take that breath. And, uh, you know, my favorite strategy uh, that I, I use in terms of just trying to calm myself down when I feel my heart racing, um, it's, it's called ratio breathing. And ultimately, it's real simple. Instead of just taking a deep breath, what you really want to do is breathe in uh, through your nose. And if you count to yourself in your head, count to about three. And then when you exhale, you're going to double that, maybe counting slowly to six, and you're going to go out your mouth, kind of like blowing through a straw. So it looks something like this where you go. And then if you repeat that long uh, inhale in through your nose and a really long, slow exhale out your mouth, if you do that just even three or four times, uh, you can you just start to feel it. And what it literally does is calm that heart rate down and um, that anxiousness that you have. And to just go a little bit further with um, this point, um, a way that I, show, uh, I share with teachers and, and my professional role, and we talk about it for kids, we call it cookie breathing. And so when you imagine... Uh, you're baking some fresh cookies and right you walk into the kitchen and grandma mom dad whoever's making them it's just the smell and the aroma fills the room and so imagine that you're going to take a cookie breath to calm yourself down so you want to take that in you smell that cookie oh it smells so so good and then it comes out of the oven but maybe you can't eat it quite yet right it's going to fall apart it's a little too warm might burn your hand and so you have to kind of cool it off you might go and that blowing out and so it's a good way to teach kids um, a nice breathing technique so they can calm their bodies down um, and we don't say or do something we regret and we just feel better. Uh, so those are both the proactive and then the immediate responsive uh, ideas that I would share. No, thanks, Brian. We actually do some of that around my house too. And um, on top of that, the thing I found myself doing is paying a little bit more attention to my kids. When I see them kind of revving up for whatever reason, I'm, I'm trying to break that kind of behavior chain or that action that's going on on, hey, let's do something else. Let's take a break. Let's you know, move around. And even with doing all those things, we found time where it's, hey, I'm going to go over here for a couple minutes and take some deep breaths. And you head back to your room and we'll get back together in a few minutes because right now we're just not gelling. Yep. I mean, I can say we're doing the same thing in my house. Um you know, I talked a lot about, you know, spending time together at dinner and watching TV shows. Um, but there is times where we, we need to have our own time um, as adults and for the kids. Um, so it, you've got to find a balance. If people have questions, if they want to learn more about how Four Oaks, you know, as an organization can support them beyond contacting the school district, how can they reach out to you? Absolutely. Um, so if you go to fouroaks.org, and that's spelled out F-O-U-R, uh, oaks.org, um, there's a tab on there that will go to our communications department. Um, if they're located near Marshalltown, that will get sent to me. Um, and then I will make a personal call. As service providers, we got into this to help kids and families, right? And so if they're a Marshalltown student, a family, um, whether it's quote unquote crisis or just like need some support, um, that will get to me and I'll make a call. Thanks guys. And I do wanna share with our community again, like you've heard in some of the other segments we've done, our school counselors and our school resource specialists are still working to support you 
through our website or just contacting the school, you can make connection with them. But again, if you find yourself needing some help or support, you can reach out to the school or our partners with Four Oaks. And until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay connected.